Today we're going to talk about feline introductions. How we're going to help two cats, you know, meet up. When we're adding one cat into the home, say somebody's moving in, somebody's coming home for college, Christmas is coming. Uh, we may have people who are traveling to your home and they're going to be staying maybe all the way through until after New Year's as a way of, you know, avoiding too much travel. I know people are still going to get together even though we're not supposed to, but that's life, right? So if somebody comes along with their cat or now but if someone is moving back home, say from college, job change, layoff, whatever, and living in your home now and they're bringing a cat, and you have an existing cat, how we have these two cats introduce, meet up, and learn to live together happily is very important, and this starts with those first days. And there are a number of steps to this introducing the cat, especially through a closed door, the baby gate, but I'm gonna take you through the, I'm gonna do a couple of presentations on this because it is kind of long to do it right. And it's really important for our cats that we make the introductions uh, go well for them, considering their behavior and their needs. So first of all, you know, each cat, the let's say the new cat coming to the home, pretend this is a bedroom door, some kind of a room that the new cat will have their own litter box, their own bed to sleep in, a purse to sleep in. Their, now their food and water I do not want them getting a lot of food out of a bowl in that room. Just maybe for the first overnight, you know, as part of just getting accustomed to living there. But after that, we're going to use their food, their meal for play to learn how to move around and get up on these perches or places, even in their, their home here. And when they are allowed out in the general space, when this kitty goes back in that bedroom, okay, because we're still keeping them separate. but. We use food to teach them how to lure up and get off the floor to avoid the high traffic zones like hallways and stairways and the living room floor, the family room floor. This is where a lot of cat, you know, stare down aggression or conflict happens. So this is how we're gonna avoid it when they are finally released to the home. And then secondly for this, the co-feeding outside the door. So I'm just gonna talk today about the co-feeding through the doorstep. So co-feeding is really what it, the purpose of it is. I know I have my stuffed cats because Binks would be all over the place right now, but for this cat here to learn to like knowing another cat, and I've got my little stuffed cat on the other side of this door here, if you can see him, he's over there. So learn to like another cat within four or five feet of this cat in the same space. That's the purpose of it. The purpose is for desensitizing and positively conditioning this established home cat to the new cat. And it's done through the feeding because food is a reward. But with cats, we need to take it very stepwise. And how we do this is, and we want to also take advantage of an opportunity to set share. So the way to do this, and actually this, I found this out, whatever, kind of saw this technique by accident. My daughter used it when she had a roommate in college whose cat and her cat, uh, the new cat moving into the apartment would sometimes aggress on her cat. So they would use, you know, separate them. And she put this blanket, a fleece blanket under the door, basically to stop the two cats from batting at each other through the door, you know, pawing and hissing. And I said, hang on, that's actually gonna be helpful because as one cat, her cat who was very accustomed to other cats would lay on this fleece blanket. I said, that's putting Binks' scent on this fleece blanket. And the other cat laying and wallowing around in that blanket is getting her scent on that blanket. So what I want you to do is every day rotate the blanket when you guys are using, you know, the bedroom for isolating and then also feed them on the blanket far enough apart so they will eat and then until they will be both be eating by the door. And she did this, you know, using the blanket technique really sped up the process. It's, it made it a lot shorter for the cats to learn to accept each other because the scent on the blanket now is being uh, shared like 
when Binks was rolling on his side and then it was the blanket was rotated, he was picking up the other cat's scent and the other cat was picking up Binks' scent. So this is how we could actually do two things, the scent sharing and then of course the positive conditioning to each other. So a fleece blanket, cats love fleece. Fleece is like the cat magnet. So a thin fleece blanket that you're going to stretch, you can see here, I've got the whole blanket extending on one side of the door all the way through to the other side. So we have about, this is about a five foot, six foot blanket. So it's like three feet on this side and three feet on the other side. So, and you can also use the feel away spray and lightly mist, you know, onto the blanket and real important, these 90 degree angles in the home. This is where the cats would normally be rubbing their face and doing scent sharing. So just one little spritz on each door jam on each side of the door. Okay, this is your setup. You're gonna put the feel away on every day, but what we wanna do then is meal times then, we are going to take a small dish and put the most flavorful, the most appealing food on a small saucer or plate or small bowl right here at the far corner of the blanket for each cat on each side of the door. And then we're just gonna leave them alone and see if they eat. Because if they eat, their anxiety is low enough to want to consume food. If they don't eat, if this say established cat is looking at this bowl of tuna or chopped chicken or fancy feast canned food that they love and is just sitting there not eating, this cat is saying, uh-uh, I'm too close. I'm too stressed. So what you will do then is back this cat up another couple feet and put the bowl down. It's really important for um, your clients to have a handout like this, the body language of fear in cats, uh, handout from Cattle Dog Publishing, and also my ladder, feline ladder of aggression. I know a lot of my clients do this, just tape it right next to the area where we're doing this, you know, cats learning to eat through the door to help remind people like, oh yeah, he's not eating, so therefore move the food back. Because for this, if the cat's not eating, he's saying, I need to be five feet away. Okay, that's our store, starting point. So every day, twice a day, each cat is gonna have a small offering of the most flavorful food for trying to come, you know, get them to become conditioned coming close to the door. Now, ultimately, ultimately, when the cats can eat through like that, right next to the door, side by side, closed door, solid door, and no hissing, no staring, no tail twitching. Uh, now they may eat and he may, you know, walk away, but the fact that he did eat, then you're at the goal for changing to some kind of a gait. Now, I know some of the feline behaviorists and especially feline medicine specialized veterinarians are now recommending um, kind of like this door jam thing, I forget what it's called, that kind of holds the door partially open for the cats to choose to play or whatever through that opening. That could be the next step rather than the gate. In, in many of the households I've been consulting with though, any kind of like a, the door itself sometimes becomes the cats have developed barrier frustration, which may have been going on before, you know, needing to use this door. So I still will use the baby gate, but I'm gonna give you tips on how to do the baby gate correctly so we're not making cats be very face-to-face -face and confrontational and making them have to stay in the space where they really see each other. The purpose of the solid door is just to get them first, like I can at least be in this, this area with you. I, I can at least tolerate or be happy, non-aggressive, knowing your body is near. That's what the solid door part is doing for you. So now let me walk through putting in the baby gate part. All right, so hang on, I'm gonna do this. Whoops, I need my thing for keeping the door open. So with the baby gate step, we would open, sorry, open the solid door. This is just your typical pressure fit type baby gate. And that's another thing that's important. These pressure fit style gates, I'll just prop it there. 
these pressure fit style gates, be specific with your clients when you say a baby gate. They have to get this type, not the taller walkthrough with the bars that go like this, because a lot of cats can slip through the bars. They're too, they're too wide apart. And so if we have one cat who wants to run after this cat, or especially if we had intercat aggression and now we're trying to reintroduce the house cats, that with the bars, this, you know, the one cat may slip through and start to chase after this one. So always get this lattice type baby gate. And then I like to start with like a blanket or something covering it all but maybe about that amount, okay? Because now then we have where they could choose to see each other or they could go hide. And then when you get, when you switch to the baby gate, you're gonna have to move the food farther back because now the fact that they can see each other may stress these cats out. So we have to back up the distance, give them more space to reduce their anxiety so they will eat. When you get to the point where the cat, now I am not, we are not intending to make the cat get right up against this again. We may be within a foot, okay? And as, the, as he's eating well, we're gonna draw the curtain back each time until we ultimately have where the cats are able to eat on either side of the baby gate and seeing each other without any hissing, no hissing, no staring, no twitching tails, no swatting. Now, if one of the cats chooses to leave, actually that's fine, that's good. They're learning to leave if they don't like being around each other, as long as it's not in a high level of fear. When the cats get to where they can eat like this, then the next step is we're actually going to stop using the bowls of food and we are going to take, sorry, I thought I had my food in here, but we're gonna take small nuggets. We're now gonna use play time around the gate with each cat, tossing their food <clears throat> to teach this cat to actually move around here, eating his tossed hard food. You've probably seen my video on my YouTube channel, how to stop cat fights by tossing the food, but it's that same technique tossing the food so this cat wants to kill his food over here and you do the same for that cat so I would be standing here and I'd be tossing food to this kitty so he's doing this here and I toss food to that cat so that cat moves away from the gate <clears throat> and what's beneficial is the two cats can witness each other moving away from each other and not staring down from each other and sharing space. So when you're at that level, then we can take the baby gate out and allow them to come into the home. Now, if this cat's not really motivated to want to go after that nugget of food, you can use a laser light to point on the ground to attract the cat to go after and then toss the food nugget. It's really important with laser light play for cats to periodically toss the food nugget so they achieve that goal of killing something, but we can use laser light play as a way to teach this cat when you see that kitty move away in a non-fearful manner rather than going after and do the same for the cat on the other side. Um, so when, like I said, when they get to the point where they're happy eating at the gate this way, then we shift into cat play to move away from the gate and then we can ultimately take the gate away. And when we allow the cats to come in the home, we, and we, when they have not been, you know, doing the introduction, we've been already working on teaching the cats to get up on those perches, follow the tossed food, to move down the hallway, move around in the living space. And this is how we can help the cats if they come in that hallway rather than uh, stopping at each other, we toss the food so one keeps on going this way while the other one keeps going that way and we avoid a fight and we avoid a confrontation. Okay, close this here. Now, of course, every cat, you know, the, whatever the pairing is of your cats, some will take longer to reintroduce than others. What's very important <clears throat> is to recognize the level, the level of anxiety that they have, what are they showing on here? and whether or not they will eat the food and communicate that. Please tell your veterinarian. Many of our cats over the age of seven 
uh, have moderate arthritis or even major arthritis, and that's a big reason why they're irritable, they don't accept another cat because they're having trouble moving and they're in chronic pain. So medications such as joint supplement, joint diet, or gabapentin as a pharmaceutical medication, uh, there are supplements also that can help to reduce the chronic pain, also help to reduce the anxiety and helps with the uh, introduction, you know, learning how to be present with each other and move around the house to get up on these perches. For the anti-anxiety medications for our cats, there are now a number of them, a couple different medications that have been used for behavior modification in cats. Prozac fluoxetine is one. Gabapentin actually is, is really very good at reducing anxiety in addition to helping to reduce the pain. And um, if many of you have attended my lectures and continuing education on-demand courses, I give a recipe for how to make that taste a whole lot better because it's nasty bitter. Amitriptyline is another medication that can help a lot of these cats. Or lastly, buspirone. There is also uh, some of the, we have to be very careful with the fifth class called the benzodiazepams. But all I wanna say is that we now have much more knowledge to help our cats be less chronically anxious and how to come together and cohabitate both pharmaceutically, like what medications will help them, but it has to be paired with the behavior modification plan or this introduction plan. It's very stepwise. And also, before we release the cats, that we've set the home up adequately with enough perches and taught the cats how to move around the house, not move around the house willingly for like chasing their food and finding their food. And that's what helps them to choose not to aggress on each other as well as uh, learn how to get along. Um, I, as I said, I'm gonna go through the additional steps of cat introduction and some other future Facebook Lives. And I'm loading all of these Facebook Live videos up on my YouTube channel, so it can be a really easy way for you to refer back to it, as well as to send your clients there. Um, I appreciate your support. I hope everybody's staying healthy and has an awesome Christmas time. I know it's been uh, it's been a challenging year, hasn't it? Uh, I'm so glad that the vaccines are now out and available, and they're starting to be used for our first line workers and our healthcare workers. And I really hope that we all support the science and efficacy of this va of vaccination to help us through this pandemic. Thank you very much. Uh, email me or you know call me or whatever if you have any cases or questions. I am taking behavior consults and continuing to do that. And uh, thank you again. Bye bye.